before I forget, I've got to give a shout out to Sinet. Sinet is one of my athletes that I had attend my coaching training camp in India. This was back in 2018, I believe. And it was a three day camp in, uh, in India. And he attended and he, his mission was to quit his job take running really seriously and taking coaching really seriously. And the reason I'm congratulating him is that he just participated at the World Trail Championships representing Team India. So way to go, Sinet. That's awesome. Today I wanna to talk about how we can get faster on trails in general, but specifically uphill and downhill. And this is with the idea that opposite of some of these trail runs, you're doing your speed work to get faster at your one mile time that will also help you get faster on trails and ultra marathoning. So I've done a lot of videos on that. So again, the assumption is that you're doing some faster, flatter speed work to improve your overall speed, raw speed, to allow you to get faster on trails. Let's talk about uphills first and in general, what is the, going to be the best way for us to improve our speed? And remember, there's two ways to get speed. And it's through cadence or frequency, how often we strike the ground, and our distance per stride. And when we're on trail, especially uphill, our ability to utilize distance per stride to gain speed is diminished because we're going, we're fighting against gravity uphill. Therefore, it takes more force, more power, and more effort to, again, apply that force into the ground to get your distance per stride. So it's either gonna force you to run too hard based on a distance in the race you're doing or the, what you're out to do that day, or it's just you're, you're not gonna be able to, again, utilize getting enough distance per stride to make speed a, a change for you. So we need to rely more on cadence or again, how frequently we strike the ground. And so we wanna improve our cadence when we're climbing, when we're going uphill. So we're giving ourselves a more frequent opportunity to propel ourselves uphill. And that's gonna really help us gain our speed. Just like anything neuromuscular, which cadence is, and in other scenarios in improving cadence, we want to get better at running uphill to improve our cadence at an easy effort first, and then apply that to faster and faster, okay? That's where the efficiency, that's where the improvement, that's where most people, most runners need to improve their cadence is when they're running easy uphill. It's crucial early season when you're doing your long runs, when you're doing uphill work, practice a higher cadence at an easier effort, and then let that create the efficiency so now you're getting faster and faster and faster from faster cadence and you're training your body to become more and more efficient at that level of effort and that's the key is that the effort becomes easier with higher cadence now you're faster at an easier effort and then that's what translates across the board to other speeds and that's the ticket for improving uphill. So see it as a process, just again, like all cadence, it's not just a decision. You've got to go out and train that efficiency. So let's talk about the downhill. Specifically on very technical terrain or very slow terrain on trails, is that again, if we're I'm, like, I'm on a windy trail today, it's just, you can't build an, a lot of speed, even if you're flat or downhill. And a lot of my terrain in general is very technical. So where I'm gonna improve on my speed on technical terrain and very slow windy terrain is cadence. Okay, so this is again, this is a time where you don't want to reach out to get your distance per stride. So on this technical terrain, on this windy slow terrain, we need to utilize our cadence because again, it's hard for us to gain distance per stride because the trail's always changing or we're navigating over sharp rocks and in very technical terrain. Again, it's hard to utilize distance per stride. So we must practice having higher cadence in this technical environment. 
So one way to do this is when you get to a technical section, whether it's downhill or more flat, is stop and do repeats back and forth on it and just practice having quicker and quicker feet. And what this does is by doing repeats on the same section, your brain and your body gets used to the same technical aspects each time. So you get better and better at that same, same track. After you see it over and over and over, you begin to know where your foot needs to go, where you need to dance around rocks, where you can get faster and where that cadence can improve. You get more comfortable with the terrain. Therefore, as we get more comfortable, you can become better and better at quicker, quicker cadence. Imagine like you're running on hot coals and you can't burn your feet. Okay. And then what happens is doing this on familiar terrain over and over and over that trains the brain and that translates to when you get to foreign terrain and your, your body and your brain see it no differently. And it, it, that's where the neuromuscular training comes in. It can, it, it, it adapts to that more foreign types of terrain and it's not a surprise to your brain and your body. And you're able to transfer that quicker cadence to again, foreign terrain or terrain that you're not used to. Okay. So it's really, really potent to again, stop and work a section of trail back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and get really, really good at it. And this could be within one run or within, you know, a four, six, eight week cycle where each week you're, you're doing maybe some of the same trails and same terrain and you're practicing this quicker cadence. Again, it's just like uphill. You want to learn to do it well first and then that translates to getting faster and faster and faster. And that's how neuromuscular training works is that you, you make, you make it easy at first and you get faster at easy, quicker with cadence at easy efforts. And then that translates across the board when you want to go faster and naturally your, your skills improve. So again, this is a skill based type of improvement that takes practice. Okay. So give that a try. And again, see it as something that you practice through time. And this is also a good time to utilize a natural or minimal shoe that will allow you to have a lighter weight shoe in general, a lower to the ground shoe. So you have better ground feel and you will improve your cadence because you don't have as much cushion and you have to actually find the path of least resistance. And that actually through time, helps you to quicken your cadence substantially. So then when you throw on more of a shoe that you might need for a longer race or a longer run, you have that agility, you have that cadence and that neuromuscular training in your body and your brain that will allow you to do that in a more built up shoe. Um, so use the natural minimal shoe as a tool. I talk about using shoe, the shoes as a tool all the time. This is a perfect way to utilize this as a tool, a training tool, a strength tool, and allow your other runs, your longer runs and races to be quicker and stronger. So, all right, give that, a, give that a whirl. I'm carrying on. The bugs are getting me again. It's I'm in a bug zone. So, all right. Let me know questions on that as always. And I'll see you guys next time over and out from Teton Village, Jackson Hole, and Born to Run World. See ya.